American citizens have the right to know what is happening around us. Do you agree? Now, if that's the case, then maybe all of us should be aware of the truth behind our expenses nowadays. Were you aware that using a credit card these days could land you in a lot of trouble? How? Here's how. Well, you better believe it, or maybe you don't, but the holiday shopping season is around the corner for us, and we all know that paying for those gifts and decorations with a credit card it's a popular strategy for most people. But tonight, there's new data showing just how expensive choosing to go with a retail credit card could be. According to Bankrate, the average retail credit card APR just hit a new record high of 28.9%. That's up by more than two percentage points compared to last year. The average store-only credit card has a 30.2% interest rate, and the retailers with the highest average interest rates include Academy Sports, Burlington, and Michaels at more than 33%. Jewelry giants Jared K. Jewelers and Zales aren't too far behind at 32%. Think about that for a second. 28.9%? Man, oh man. How are people going to deal with that kind of interest? But sure, let's all think that inflation's going down. The economy's doing amazing, yada, yada, yada. But this number, that 28.9%, that's a new record high. The record high for 2022 was 26.72%. For 2021, it was 24.35%. And I mean, you know, just look at the graph here. You see the red line? That's our credit card debt. The green line? That's our personal savings rate. Now, these two are growing apart more than Will and Jada each day because less Americans are able to pay off their debt. Now, the huge problem that many households now have is that just like this graph, their savings are done. So what do they do? How do they buy their essentials? Food, water, gas, all these things that they need to live on a daily basis? You guessed it right credit cards. But are we aware of that truth? Nope. They probably just say that pigs can fly before they tell you that we're in economic trouble. In fact, they're telling us that consumers are staying resilient throughout all of this. But hey, you guys know what's up. You tell me. Do you think that more consumers are doing much better these days? Comment a quick yes or no down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to smash the like button. We really need more people on the truth train here. And also don't forget to subscribe and also hit that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any crucial updates. Appreciate that, you guys. So getting back on topic, did you hear about the GDP numbers? The expectation was for 4.5%, but lo and behold, we got 4.9%. Good news, right? High fives all around. Man, I really want to know if these guys in office believe what the heck that they're actually putting out. But here's what an expert says about these numbers and how it's probably going to affect all of us throughout 2023 to 2024. The U.S. has been the growth engine for the world. It also highlights the challenges the Fed faces. But what we should not do is take this as a signal of the all clear for 2024. Um, you know, as you know, I've always pushed back on the notion that we would have a recession in 2023. I'm a little bit worried about 2024. Early 2024, late 2024, how do you see this playing out? It's hard to tell. I mean, we have first the rundown in savings, that's a big issue. Secondly, what's been happening in the interest rate market is really problematic. It's problematic for businesses, it's problematic for governments, for the Fed, it's problematic for households, and that is a significant headwind to economic activity. You see, that's the thing. They aim to destroy us, folks. That's something you should know because when crashes happen, that's when sales come. That's when people who knew well enough to prepare get the best deals. And that's why I keep telling you guys, I think I've been doing this for years now. You have to prepare. You can't believe everything they tell you because they don't want you enriching yourselves. But I just want to touch lightly on that recession talk that we heard. Do you think that we're not in a recession right now? I mean, listen to what Chris Watling, CEO of Longview Economics has to say about the US consumers. I think the US consumers walking towards a, a, a cliff, basically. Uh, they're running out of cash. If you look at excess savings, they've been run down quite hard. If you look across the income quartiles, the bottom three or four income quartiles have, under pressure, probably spent all those excess savings in, in negative have you territory. Said the bottom three or four quartiles. How many quartiles do you have if there's four? Well, quintiles, I meant, obviously. <laughs> sorry, sorry to be a bit. I was, I was to interested a... to see if you were awake. Sorry to be a on. But yeah, the bottom four quartiles, they're under pressure. The rest are fine. It's a, it's a subtle way of slipping things in. Um, so you've got all that. I mean, and, and of course, retail sales have been quite strong for the last few months. So everyone gets quite excited about that. But actually, if you look at what's going on, um, people have been run, the household savings ratio has been run down. And in fact, real income growth has been negative for three months. So, so it's, not quite, it's not quite all good news. I mean, quite, quite the reverse. I think there's some real challenges coming for the, for the US consumer. Do you agree with that? Because like I said, Americans are running down their savings while they build up their debt. It's really a bad mix. It's like milk and soda. Have you ever tried that? I don't recommend it. So here's another sign that things are about to hit the fan. 
Hasbro and Mattel, two of the biggest toy companies in the world. It's not gonna feel like Christmas at all. You have to realize that the holidays are where these companies make most of their money, but they're already cutting their full year outlook as they're seeing a slowdown in toy sales. This hasn't helped them in the stock market and expectations are that they're gonna be going down even more. All because consumers just can't afford to buy stuff that they used to be able to afford just a few years ago. This is due to wages not keeping up with inflation. And I mean, we're already seeing layoffs by the thousands. And if households can't afford toys, then they probably can't afford to travel either, right? I mean, that's probably one of the reasons as to why Southwest Airlines saw their third quarter profits sink by 30%. They're also saying that growth will be slow for 2024 and who can blame them, right? We can be told all the good news in the world, but that's not gonna change the fact that there, there's households out there that won't be able to handle the coming storm. West earlier today, stock trying to bounce off the initial lows, but that is gonna be a nine year low today. Let's get to Phil LeBeau live in Dallas with Bob Jordan. Hey, Phil. Hey, Carl, Bob. Good to be down here once again in the hangar where you do some work on some of your, your aircraft here. Let's start first off. You basically meet expectations in terms of your third quarter, um, both on top and bottom line. But your guidance about capacity has spooked investors. Your stock is now at a nine-year low. Why are you pulling out or why are you slowing down your growth in capacity as much as you are? Well, I, I start first with uh, we, we had a great quarter in the third quarter. We had record operating revenues. We had... Uh, record passengers, we had record rapid rewards revenues, we had record new rapid rewards members, we had record ancillary uh, 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 revenues, and we're forecasting record revenues and record passengers again uh, for the fourth quarter. You know, the, the whole sector is under pressure, obviously. Uh, costs are rising. Uh, a lot of that is labor costs. A lot of times it takes a while to absorb that. We, we plan to make some capacity changes here in 2024. Uh, just to recognize the fact that travel patterns are different. You know, business is strong, but it's still restoring. Our leisure demand is strong, but the patterns are different than they were during pre-pandemic. So we, we will be taking capacity out of the first quarter, and we are reducing our overall capacity for 2024 to the 6 to 8% range, which really is all capacity that is carried over from 2023. Did you get over your skis in terms of how much capacity you added here in 23? I'm, you know, I'm really proud of our folks. It was a huge effort and accomplishment to get all of our aircraft flying and to get our network restored basically to pre-pandemic levels. Now, uh, that's a lot of capacity and our sequential But capacity, did you go too far? Well, you never know. We plan for business uh, restoration to be a little higher than it is today. The main thing is uh, there's strong demand for Southwest Airlines and we're taking action as we go into 2024 to pull that capacity back prudently. Again, first quarter, back half of the year. Again, if you look at the back half of 2024, our nominal seats next year will actually be down compared to the same period in 2023. But what are your thoughts on this, guys? Is this something that those at the top want us to realize? Because y'all realize that if we stop spending, worse things would happen. Now, as always, though, I want to know what you guys think in the comment section down below. And before I go, I just want to thank you guys for your time. Thanks for liking the video. Keep safe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.